models. And here I'm simply going to resolve, oops, resolve the view model. Now some people prefer to bind their data context in the code behind. I don't have anything against that. I'm not going to ostracize you for that. Um, but you know, if you do that, you can, for example, do the setup here and then go ahead and resolve your view model and bind it directly in the view in the code behind. That works too. It works less good with Blend though. All right. So at this point, I should be able to build my application. And now let's change to expression blend. So I prepared a very simple UI with a cache. And this cache is going to be shown when an asynchronous operation is running. For the moment, I just push it aside. And now I'm going to bind my view model to my view. Now, if you use a new MVVM Lite application in Visual Studio, for example, file new project, new MVVM Lite application. And by the way, you can do that directly here. So here we see the templates for WPF 4, WPF 3.5, for Windows Phone 7, yoo-hoo, Silverlight 4 and Silverlight 3. And you can also do that in Expression Blend, by the way, because the templates are also installed for Blend. So if you do that, file new project and new MVVM Lite application, you don't need to do this wiring. That's done for you. But I think it's pretty cool to show in Blend how to do that. And also it helps if you have an existing non-MVVM application that you want to convert in an MVVM app. So the first thing I will do is go inside the project. So I'm going to create a global resource, create object data source, I'm going to call that locator. And I select the view model locator class that I implemented just before. Let's say OK. And now we see that here I have my property main of type main view model, which I can drag and drop on the user control. This is automatically binding the data context. And here we go, I'm ready to roll. Okay? Now I could have done that in XAML, but I need to remember the syntax. It's a little bit easier in Blend. So now I can go take the button. And by the way, notice there is a new pane in Blend, which is a data context panel here, which is automatically showing you the main the view model of the element that is selected. That's a Fantastic feature, honestly. I mean, if you have to upgrade to Blend just for that, do it immediately. That's great. Okay. So now the data context of my button is set to the main view model because it's inherited from the user control. User control sets it. The grid doesn't set it, so it's inherited. And the button doesn't set it explicitly, so it's also inherited. So now let's go ahead and take the comment property. Oops. I can do a data binding. Blend knows that my data context is set to my main view model, so I can go ahead and take the refresh command. Say OK, and this command doesn't need a parameter. So now my button is ready to roll. Now if I was a designer and suddenly I decide, OK, I don't want a button, but I was a uh, context menu instead, well, no problem, you just do the same, but for the context menu. The view model doesn't need to change. So you see the advantage of the command. It's really decoupling. Then the other thing I will do is edit the data template. So I prepared the data template already for the list box. But now I just want to show you that Blend knows that my data context is now set to customer view model and not to main view model anymore. Because when I am inside the list box, inside the data template, the data context is automatically set to the instance, to the item which is displayed. That's a feature of WPF and Silverlight. Okay? So I can go ahead and expand my customers. I have my model property of type customer. So that's the WPF proxy. And now I see all my properties coming from the WCF service. So I can take the first name, I'm going to drag it on this text block. And notice that I have my design data service is working because it's creating my 100 design time customers. I can take the last name. Here we do just a little bit differently. I'm going to drop it here on the UI, but it works the same. Now I can run my app. And we will see that I forgot to do something on purpose. I forgot to remove the cache. Okay? But we see in the background the data is loading. So that's working. So now let's take care of that cache. So here I'm in the main page again. I'm going to show the cache so that we see what we do. And I'm going to create states for my control, for my main page. 
We need to call that the busy states. I will have one state called normal and another state called busy. Now when I am in normal state, I want my cache to be at 0% opacity. And I also want to collapse it because I want to be able to access what is below, okay? When it's invisible in terms of opacity, it is still there in the way of your mouse, okay? If the heat test is set to visible. So in that case, I just remove it. And then in busy state, I'm here. I'm going to add a small transition, just half a second, to make things a little bit smoother. And by the way, I can see, I can visualize the transitions in blend, so that's pretty cool. So now I have my two states. Now I need to tell my control how to switch from one state to the other. So to do that, I'm going to use a blend behavior, which is included into expression blend four beta called the data state behavior. I'm going to drag it and drop it on my root. And now I can say when the data binding, which is set to the is busy property of the main view model, okay? I need to say when the value is set to true, then the true state should go to busy. Oops, busy. And then when it's false, when it's not busy, you should go to normal. Okay, so now I made the binding, but in my view, to my property in the main view model, which is of type Boolean, so you can test the property. Okay. Then the last thing I want to do is show you Inside, uh, let me just get out of this recording. Here we go. So now I'm going to go back into my data template. So now I'm inside the data template again, okay? And I told you that you can execute a command normally out of the box only when a button is clicked, which is annoying. So here in this case, I will use another behavior which comes from the MVVM Lite Toolkit this time called event to command, I'm going to drop it on the text box. And then I'm going to say, you have to react to the lost focus event. So every time that the customer is tabbing out of the text box, this event, this command will be executed. So I choose lost focus. I'm going to data bind. And now I have one more issue, okay? The data context of the data template, I told you before, is set to the customer view model but my command is set on the main view model, okay? But thankfully, we have this global guy, locator, which has a property of type main view model. So I can do my bindings through the locator. So I'm, I'm going out of the, imp of the implicit data context of the data template, and I go inside another object inside my main view model, and I'm going to choose the save customer command. This save customer command needs a parameter of type customer view model, so I'm just going to do an empty binding, meaning I'm, I just write in XAML binding and nothing else. So I'm binding to the data context of the current element, which is the customer view model, okay? All right, so I can run my code. The cache is going to disappear when the data is loaded. If I refresh, okay, it's, the network is faster than at home, so <laughs> you hardly see it, but it is here. Also, let me show you the XML file, which is actually my data source. And here, see that my name is set to Bunion. Uh, I think I can do that a little bit bigger. Here we go. But if I go ahead and edit the name, for example, like this, and then I tab out of the text box, we saw that there was an asynchronous operation. And now if I refresh, this file, if I refresh this file, yep. Okay, something didn't work quite well and I'm not sure what. That's weird. All right, I hope 